episode of the MDS Show Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanjo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. It's Christmas in August. Mm, doesn't roll off the tongue. I mean, that seems about right. All the malls are already putting up their Christmas decorations and whatnot. Yeah, I'm getting Halloween in my area, but yeah, <laughs> they're jumping the gun. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. I mean, wait. Fort was a while back. So, wait, it's also um, Thanksgiving, so, oh man, American holidays. Oh, that comes, that comes after uh, Halloween, uh, so. <laughs> still, still, also joining us today is Jacob. Hey everybody, and if the red things are going here, where I am, we're gonna pretty much have winter soon. I am, uh, is there any holiday in between? Whatever was passed till now for you? Uh, no, not uh, not at the moment. So basically, it's going to go straight to Christmas then. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Alrighty then. But anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review the My Little Pony Equestria Girls Holiday Unwrap Special. In this last piece of Equestria Girl content produced by DHX Media, unlike previous special, it is a compilation of six, seven-minute shorts instead of a single hour-long story, which is kind of sad. But hey, we, we, we got what we got. Anywho, uh, before we head in, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think? Well, I, I enjoyed these shorts. I mean, I enjoy Equestria Girls overall. Uh, I, I The one that still stands out in my mind the most is the snowball fight. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, if only because it, it conjured up some memories of seeing uh, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Yeah. But I guess we'll tackle each one as we get there. All right, all right. Uh, and Jacob, what about you? Yeah, that's the thing. I originally expected this to be another single special, but instead it's several shorts and shorts clamped together. Apparently, the developers couldn't come up with an overarching story for this one. I don't know either they were short on time or whatever. So just uh, put on the shirts they got from uh, certain certain ideas. But other yeah. than that, it was entertaining. Yeah, I, I see that. And uh, as for me, this special was all over the place like you mentioned before jacob they, they, there wasn't really an overarching story special i, I know it's short vignettes and whatnot uh, so um it's kind of a short clip and whatnot but there's nothing that kind of connects each and every one of it except for quote-unquote christmas and it's I don't know. It feels like they could have done things better, or I feel like maybe we should go back to Equestria. But now nah, this is this is the last one, and for for a last one, I mean it was something. But anywho, um, if you guys have not watched this at home, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off this story with well, um, the title, uh, the Hol- uh, My Little Pony Equestria Girls Holidays Unwrapped, and with the first one it's Blizzard or Burst. So we see the girls having a quote unquote sleepover at Twilight's place, and it seems that everybody were doing some. Overnight studying before the finals going uh, that, that's going to happen, and we see them study really really hard to ace the test, but somehow they didn't they sleep, sleep properly. Yeah, I mean they, they fell asleep. They didn't sleep properly. They kind of slept on the job. I mean, everybody did that, right? When they were in school before, yes. I remember getting violently sick the the day before a finals test. 
uh, just before winter break. And boy, that so having to do a makeup test. Ugh. Oh no, that's that's not cool. That was a t- that was a bad day. That, that's yes. not cool. But anywho, um, we see the girls just waking up because the alarm rang, and we we see that Rainbow didn't sleep because. She's devising a plan and she tells the girl, Look, it's snowing. And this means snow day. Uh, Silver, could you explain the concept of snow day to the people who don't have snows? Mm. Well, on certain days when the snow level has reached or a peak flurry or or the roads are icy and treacherous as a result of said snow. Uh, It's very common practice to delay or even close a school because they don't want to risk the health and safety of their students coming in and risking a lawsuit. Actually, I'll tell you a true, uh, here's a quick story. Principal's first day on the job, they have school as normal, but it's snowy and there's this really sharp turn. So one car hits the turn too fast and spins out. And, uh, well, the driver gets out to make sure the car's okay. Another car coming behind him spins out and pins the first driver between the two cars. So they have, they have to get, uh, uh, and paramedics out there, make sure the person's okay. Tow trucks to get the cars. Uh, out of the way. So the principal from that day on, if there was a flake, just a flake falling, there was a delayed start or a snow day. Oh. Never want to repeat that experience again. Oh, wow. I mean, he learned from experience and that's good, I guess. But it, I don't know. Uh, in certain ways. Uh, a bit excessive, but a being bit reactive. Him, yeah, but being him and that happened, I say... Be, uh, be extra cautious as long as everybody's safe. But anywho, um, so so now that we understand what Snowy is, um, Rainbow Dash should devise a plan to say that, yo, girls, we can use this to our advantage and we can have a snow day. The rest of the girls says, Rainbow, it's not that heavy. Uh, people can still go to school. And Rainbow says, yes, but we have powers. We face uh, evil, <laughs> do evil something and whatever it is. I bet we can uh, do something with our powers to create a snow day. <laughs> so we can abuse our powers for personal gain. Young lady, Superman, you are not. I, I mean, everybody seems like they're into the plan except for Twilight. <laughs> Well, I mean, she she's just drag along. So, <coughs> we see that that snowflake was kind of a fluke. But the girls are already in their winter attire uh, and they're starting to create the plan. And the plan is to create a backdrop, uh, make some snow and trick Principal Celestia and Vice Principal Luna into creating a snow day or having a snow day, whatever it is. So uh, they start by, uh, well, Pinkie Pie creating some mashed potatoes, um, Fluttershy asking her birds to create some snow and Rainbow Dash to do stuff. So basically everybody's doing their part to execute the plan. And once that's done, we see that um, Principal Celestia, Vice Principal Luna comes in saying, oh no, uh, it's heavy snow and we need to call a snow day. And before... She can make the call. Cranky, uh, cranky doodle here just uh, comes in saying that, yeah, no, that won't be needed because we, uh, the girls outside there are just playing a trick on you. <laughs> and 
Also, also, they raided the cafeteria for all our potatoes. Oh, no. The school lunch is ruined. Oh, no. It was supposed oh, to wait. be mesh and bangers. <laughs> Redundant. <laughs> Something I don't get. Why potatoes? <laughs> Jacob. Probably the softest thing that you can mush up to assemble. Into a snowman? Yeah, but I mean, they were already making the snow to begin with. Couldn't they just, uh, I don't know, build a snowman after <laughs> the snow had dropped down? Jacob, this is Pinkie Pie we're talking about. We don't question her. Uh, yeah. Whatever Pinkie of, wants, Pinkie gets. We, we, we just... Of perfectly good taters. <laughs> I know, but do you really want to make a snowman? Not of mashed potatoes. <laughs> Do you want to be Would you like a baked potato? Come on, let's have some chives. Oh, man. Mashed potatoes would sound really awesome right now. But anywho, <laughs> uh, the girls here kind of have their exam and also detention. And somehow, um, the test that they're taking is something to do with weather. And with yeah, uh, water vapor, because I totally remember being quizzed on that in school. Water vapor. I've, I I totally forgot what I learned in school, and water vapor seems logical to me, I guess. But a whole exam on that—that's a bit excessive. But with that, episode ends. So the, the the first one is fun. The first one is fun. So uh, yes, but but uh, have you have you given proper accolades to the potato man with his tribute song? What what song? Mashed potatoes, hey, sweet potatoes, baked potatoes. Potato chip. Oh god, no. Whoa! Smoke sauce fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, it goes on from there, but you get the gist. Uh-huh. Where is that from? That is from a long canceled show, Cartoon Planet. Brack sings the mashed potato song. That's for the blast. From, very much from the past, but I always love the uh, the ending line. Oh, baby, pass the butter. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So, um, you know what? Since this is a short, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys for your thoughts on the specials. Uh, Silver. Okay, Rainbow looks terrifying, sleep deprived. <laughs> Just putting that out there right now. Uh, looks like she's going to kill someone. It's like she's just a step away from that whole, you know, if someone dies, we automatically get an A. (laughs) But, I mean, this is an innovative use of their powers. But at the same time, it's a total abuse of their powers. And somehow they all manage to get there to get just the information they need trying to cheat. I don't know if that's a good message you want to send to the kids. It could be just a coincidence, but... Hmm. Well, plot convenience, so it doesn't end on a bad note, but... Well, now that's kind of a weird... Weird moral, <laughs> weird lesson. Hey, if you can't... And they win, listen to... If you can't win, be the deterrent to everybody else. Well, who, who knows? What do the kids take away from this? Making- also, Rainbow just needs to work on the fact that, you know, block all the windows. All the windows. <laughs> all right, Jacob. Well, uh, for starters, um, Cranky looks kind of odd, but honestly, that's probably because I uh, never, saw, um, never saw him before in the series, and I only saw him in the March of Redness. <laughs> Speaking of, since this came out in uh, 2019, 
which means that the first turn in March of Red and this really does start with as you know because uh, uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but honestly something that uh, I did find it out Starlet apparently saw the past of the snowflake that she caught somehow I mean I I always thought that only worked if she touched humans uh I hmm. I think what her power is that uh, she can see memories and stuff. And they always say that Snowflake holds memories. Is is that right, Silver? Something like that? Snowflake? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with that saying. Mm, don't remember. But I think that's the point. Or, or at least the lesson that we're supposed to get here that Oh, water comes from here, uh, it stabilizes onto a pond, it vaporizes, it turns into vapor, uh, grows into the clouds, and when it gets cold, it pours down into snow or rain, give it, whatever you need. So I'm thinking yeah. that's the lesson there. I guess. Uh, well, other than that, it was fine. Hmm. As for me, this one was kind of okay. I do like the intro about how the girls were trying to abuse their powers for their own personal gain. And we got Pinkie Pie with Potatoes. I did not need to see that. But yeah, um, seeing the girls doing their own thing, uh, using their powers in their own way is kind of cool. I like it, I like it. And who knew that Sunset was very artistic? That backdrop there? Well, we did. She was a street artist. Ah, yes, I do. She was? Yes, yes. In, yep. in one special. No, not special. Uh, one short. Ah, okay. But anywho, um, yeah. Detention was funny. Aha. Now, let's move on to the next special. Saving Pinkie Pie. Pinky Spy. Mm -hmm. Oh my, the implications <laughs> there. Ah, but anywho, we start off the episode with um, Pinkie Pie baking a souffle. And yeah. she's she didn't set the timer. And Twilight is, sorry, Sunset is there saying, oh no, Pinky, you forgot to set the timer. And Pinkie Pie is reciting all of her friends. And there's when she finished reciting her friends, that's when the souffle is finished. Which is kind of cool. And Sunset just says, You're friends with someone named uh, Cumbly Bonk Bonk. <laughs> <sighs> that name there. Mm hmm. And she just says, nah, I didn't have time. So anywho, she explains that every time around this holiday, she makes uh, Rarity a souffle and gives it to her. But every time when she sends it to her, it kind of goes flat. So this year around, she's trying to change that by sending it on time. So, talking about time, she has only around 7 minutes for it to kind of not go flat. So, Pinkie Pie drags Sunset to the door and gets suited up for the snow. Okay, um, that, that's fun. We, we see some continuity from the previous. Ah, you owe me a quarter. <laughs> okay. So... We, we continue from that. And yeah, we, we see that Pinkie Pie is being Pinkie Pie. Getting a bit excessive with putting more clothes on Sunset. But um, Pinkie, sorry, Sunset reminds Pinkie about the time and they go out the door. And it seems that there is a great war going on. And I'm here just thinking, wait, what? What, 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 what's going on? Could someone explain it to me? Wait, what? 
Have you never been in a snowball fight? Uh, in all honesty, Silver, no. But why are they having the snowball fight in front of Pinky's house? Mm, knowing Pinky, she probably set things up for them. Okay. Uh, I mean, this girl wants to be a part of everything. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But why? Why indeed? It... Well, I can just, I can't say I recall any real snowball fights aside from one outside my sophomore dorm in, in college. That was fun. Uh, the only problem was I uh, didn't have gloves at the time, so when I went inside, my hands swelled oh, no. terribly. All right. So to be honest, I have not been involved in a snowball fight. Oh, surprise. But given my current location in the globe, it's either hot or cold, and cold as in wet. <laughs> so yeah, those are my two uh, default weather for me. So snow is not an option. <laughs> well, in my old elementary school, we had snow fights all the time during winter. Ooh, okay. Please do yeah. explain to me how fun it is because I never experienced it. Well, there is one part that's not exactly fun, and that's when you get uh, snow dunked. Oh no, that sounds Face bad. first. Oh no, that sounds Face bad. first. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, yeah, it's all, it's all good fun. Silver? Until someone throws just the icy snowball that hurts like can all get out. <laughs> It's like more ice than snow, and that's just ow. Oh, I, yeah. I, I've also heard that if you insert a rock in a snowball, that 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 that, that hurts too. It does, and well, May from Overwatch would say she would do that, and that's why she's a psychotic little monster. What? Who's that? She doesn't May, exist. The Chinese girl. Um, the Chinese girl. She doesn't exist. <laughs> Uh, but, but, no, uh, but, but in all honesty, um, I, I stopped paying attention to Overwatch. Overwatch just not the same thing anymore. Like, that, 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 that depressed me. Oh, yeah. Well, sorry to drag it up, but the, but it's relevant. Oh, yeah. It's very relevant. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Anywho, yeah. Um, we, we see here that there's an all-out war. We, we see photo finish, snails, this one guy... Uh, we we see this other guy and that they they're just throwing snowballs and it's <coughs> it's all out war. Chaos. Yeah, it's all out. War. What I want to know is what is Gra what is Granny Smith doing there? Hence, why I said why are they having this fight in front of Pinky Pie's lawn? <laughs> well. I mean, like I say, I could see Pinky setting up those uh, walls for everyone to use. Because that's just how Pinkie Pie is. Mm -hmm. But why is an elderly woman getting into uh, getting into the war? I feel like that's just a little creepy. I think it reminds her of youth. Let her be. But anywho, uh, we see Maud getting plowed by snow and closing the door. And, and yeah, we, we see a lot of fights going on. We, we see that the apples are just plowing um, people with snow. And we do see a cute interaction between Trixie and Fluttershy. Ah, uh, the cute. No kiss. Well, that's all because Starlight couldn't be here. Ah, yes. Technically, have they two interacted before? With Trixie and Fluttershy? No, um, Starlight Glimmer and Equestria Girls Trixie. Nope, not uh, yet. All right. And, well, now, not ever. Oh, that sucks. Really sad. But anywho... Sunset comes in, says that ceasefire, we, we need to get past through. And Granny Smith says no, and just bombards um, Sunset with 
snow and we see the carnage fr- friends uh being hurt twilight crawling to safety um snails getting plowed by snow for just being there photo finish uh, hiding inside a doghouse while just pushing out the doggies we know now getting hit by snow oh no very bad and we see that this crosses the line this needs to stop and sunset goes in for the kill uh, and commanding Flash Sentry to come in and help her. Yay! Flash Sentry is doing something! Woo! Yeah! Let's go! And then he gets oh. avalanche in like five seconds later. <laughs> well, for me, it's, it's that how Sunset sh- summons him. Flash Sentry! To me! <laughs> I mean, when you're on that back and call, you're not even a prospective boyfriend. You're a simp. Oh. He's, he's just simping. Oh, man. I'm sorry, Flash, but you done, you done simped. Oh, God. And even now, he doesn't even get the girl. Like, you remember how we say that, ah, uh, maybe he and Derpy would make a cute couple? Doesn't even get that. We'll soon f- talk about it. So, anywho, after that failure. <coughs> failure. Um, Sunset gets hit and Pinkie Pie manages to um, get across without getting the pie. Uh, not pie, the souffle ruin. But, oh no, it's a bit out of time because the alarm clock rang and guess what rarity's there rarity's there um managed to eat the souffle at its best and says that it's the nicest thing she ever tasted and surprise sneak attack by rainbow dash who dressed up in that snow for two days that's just insane I'm surprised she didn't get snow frostbite. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, that too. But anyway, I'm surprised. I'm surprised your parents didn't put out a missing persons report. Knowing, knowing Questra girls, they think that oh, our little Dashi is just doing her superhero thing. Our little <laughs> Dashi, really? I'm speaking in terms of parenting. <laughs> you can take that however you want. But we shall. But anywho, um, before the snow can hit them, Rarity puts up a shield and yeah, it ki- kind of negates the whole thing. And episode ends. So, Jacob, what do you think? Well, uh, first of all, yeah, <laughs> let me just pull that up. Oh, God. What, what, what? what happened to Starlight? Oh, God. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, God. So, it... <laughs> never again be the love stuff house gives you still have some pockets. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, it was it's just okay. That's it. Nothing more. Oh, uh, yeah, I got nothing else. All right, and Silver, what about you? Uh, let me tell you all the tale very quickly. My dad and I were on the college tour scene, oh. trying to find just the right fit for me. But as it turns out, while we were searching, Saving Private Ryan was in theaters, oh, nice. and so we did. Uh, we went to see it, and. The violence level was such that Dad and I couldn't sleep that night. Oh, God. Was it that bad? Oh, yes. They were quite graphic in their depictions. Mm. So here, in that scene where Sunset is semi-freaking out, everything's kind of muted. She's seen all the different characters. 
uh, s- snails looking for his uh, boots is reminiscent of a guy looking for his severed arm on the battlefield. Oh, and so seeing that, I thought, my God, I never knew my little pony would reference this. Of all things, why this? Because it's funny. Expectations and whatnot. <laughs> Oh, boy. I guess, but my gosh. Wasn't, my gosh. Wasn't there any warning for the rating of the movie? Oh, no. We knew we knew going in that it was going to be violent, but how violent? I mean, this is not like slasher movie violence. No, no, no. <laughs> this is very true to life. In fact, uh, Sam Private Ryan, people said that veterans of the world war who saw it they it was too real for them oh wow that bad so that's both a, co- a compliment and a oh my god and this and now that we have uh and now we have a my little pony version of that toned down in the violence but in the spirit <laughs> the spirit oh yes the holiday spirit Yay. god um Anyway, as for me, this one, oh boy, how, how do I even put this one? This one was a lot of fun going into it. Uh, we, we do see a, a lot of uh, quote-unquote funny scenes, yes. But knowing what you mentioned, Silver, and this, yeah, I, I guess this is quote-unquote cartoon violence as its most famous While still referencing one of the most violent and graphic films in history. Yep, and also we got Flash. Finally, Flash gets to do a thing. God damn it. Ah! Ah, oh, poor Flash. The, the guy just couldn't get a break. Alright, let's, let's move on to the next one. Oi. So, next one is... The Cider Laos... Loose, loose fools? House, house. No, you were right first time. Cider louse. fools. All right, so I'm going to try and speed things up because this is mostly montage. So long story short, Applejack wants to create apple cider for her party and whatnot and uh, invites Twilight to help. But uh, time for backstory. Every time when they do their... Uh, cider making the Flim Flam brothers kind of get in the way or trick them and do just dastardly things for whatever reason I got no idea it doesn't make sense you know what I mean so anywho um, this year around Twilight says no problem I have a plan to help you not get bamboozled by them so we see a plan being strung up by Twilight, which is kind of very confusing, and I got no idea what's going on. So uh, while doing the preparations and traps, we also see that they're making cider. Oh, yes, that's awesome. And we see the traps being set up. We see the cider being made. And, you know, just a lot of things going on. So... As the event starts to come, uh, we see that Twilight made preparations, plans, and whatnot. And they seem like her friends are a bit too quiet. I wonder why. Because we see Shirley, Scooter Lou, um, the Recycle Dude, and that Bob Hair Girl. And the Flame Flame Brothers come in, saying greetings. No trick this year. We would like to buy your cider for this real life genuine diamond. And they accept it because they already have a plan. The plan is we made pepper water for them to buy and get tricked. And they bought it and went their merry ways 
and then the real cider which they kept in a box it'll be safe but it's not because somehow the flim flam brothers found some kind of tunnel entrance to go into the um box to steal it from right under their nose oh no and uh, Suns, sorry, Twilight just says, no problem, this is all part of the plan because uh, opening this door will reveal the Flim Flam Brothers trapped in a net. Oh no! But opening the barn door is revealed that they're not trapped in the net because they kind of says, haha, nobody outsmarts the Flim Flam Brothers and thanks for the cider, haha. And they give back their bottle of pepper water and they hop and run away i have so many questions to ask later on and um applejack says oh no the party is ruined uh this is terrible and apple and twilight just says aha now the real party can start and because our friends are cardboard there's so many things that... <sighs> How come nobody knows just that? Well, given the stiffness of some character presentations, I think it's natural. I know. <laughs> so, anywho, um, Twilight just says, Aha, I set the party time. <coughs> I set the party time a bit early, so the real party doesn't start soon. And this pepper water here, it's actually the real cider. I made the plan. I planned everything. Ah, I'm an evil genius. And with that, uh, Granny Smith uh, celebrates and the party officially starts. So let's uh, get into the thought. I think we're almost done. Almost, I think. So I'll, I'll go for this one. I like this one. This one was very fun to watch. Just the... 4D chess that Twilight was playing around with like oh I did this because I knew this was happening and it was just so stupid and entertaining that it was like oh wow Twilight that was ingenious but what would to happen if they did go with the pepper water and not come back oh what what would happen if they did open <laughs> and try it out and another thing, why didn't the police came along when the Flim Flam brothers come and accosted them? There's a lot of things. There are, poli Sorry? There are police in this world? Uh, you remember the one where um, uh, DJ Pwn Tree was dancing around? There were, there were police officers. On the street, you mean the one that was directing the trap? Yeah. Uh... Traffic cops. That's the highest level of security they got going, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, yeah. Um, I, I like it. I like it. Silver, what about you? Well, this seems like an awful lot of effort on all parties. Uh, all party points. Uh, you got to wonder about the budget these folks have. Twilight's able to make full cu printed cutouts of her uh, friends and classmates, which boys try explaining to that when someone comes over. And then Flim and Flam can burrow under the ground. I mean, whatever money they they make off this cider, I don't know if it if it's a cost benefit effective. So, uh, the, uh, the the tunnel that uh, Flim and Flam did, they didn't burrow. They discovered and went through it. Because Twilight planned Twilight that. dug that. Yeah, remember the... How did she dug through several, uh, several meters of concrete? No, remember <laughs> when... Yeah, that's well good for... Um, Big Mac was digging? He did that. Oh, the one where he got blindfolded for some reason. Yeah. yeah. I always wondered when uh, yes. that happened. Well, there we go. So Twilight now owes them property restoration. I don't think they even care. <laughs> Apparently not, but this is an odd, odd episode. They're, 
Why do Flim and Flam feel the need to steal from this family repeatedly? I know, right? And why don't the pol- why don't they report to the police? Oh god. Any probably because they're well, anyway, it, it's it's a weird one. It's trying to harken back to uh, the super spi- super speedy cider squeezy six thousand, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's about the long and the short of it. I mean, Super Speedy Squeezes, uh, <laughs> that Tongue Twister episode, is actually not bad. They created a product that worked. Well, I'm not sure they created it. I mean, they have a product that actually worked. Yeah. Or more specifically, <laughs> the they, only stream, time. they streamlined the process for making a product. Yeah. So, I mean, in, in uh, that sense, I don't think uh, they were bad it's just when bad when they kind of <laughs> skip quality over quant uh, qu- so, quantity yeah over yeah quantity thank you well well there you go but anyway jacob what about you well we don't know that twice the evil genius you won't get the evil genius glow <laughs> Oh, the recording to Kekaku. <laughs> <Top man. laughs> but yeah, I, I'm i honestly not bothered why suddenly in the human world film fan brothers are uh, quote-unquote sworn enemies of the apples, considering they both have apples on their flags. I don't know, man. I don't want to know. But yeah, a lot of hoop jumping for uh, being on top of one <laughs> another. But well, it's a uh, it's a fine story. All righty then. Anywho, uh, let's go to the second to last one. Sunset's uh, winter break in. Actually, it's uh, third to third to last. last. No, second to last. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh yeah, we. Oh yeah, we we have okay yeah yeah okay. Let so let's try and speed this up. So we see that the girls are going to a storage place to pick up some uh, toys that the girls were keeping in her storage locker. And surprisingly enough, Sunset has a storage locker. Aren't those things supposed to be stupid expensive? Oh, what now we're considering budget? I mean, with her, we just we just had Twilight ex- throwing money. I mean, just throwing money away. Yeah, but that's the Apple family's money. Now we're talking about Sunset. Sunset doesn't have a job except for the sushi place that she just got. It, it raises so many questions, morally questions. I mean, Sunset's able to live on her own. That nice in a pretty nice apartment and so and go to school yeah you know what I'm, I'm pretty sure she's rich uh, uh you know yeah. what I'm gonna I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna I'm gonna refrain from talking bad things mm-hmm. oh no is your mind going dirty places yes. very very dirty hmm mm, I've trained you well <laughs> Oh no, I'm corrupted. Oh no. Ye. But anywho. Um they they all reached there and now they Sunset asked for the keys from Twilight. And was it Pinky, sorry. Let's just say that they do a roundabout way that nobody has the key and the key is actually in Sunset's locker. At school. Because you forgot it there. Yep. And when they go to school, it's locked because it's kind of the winter holidays, something like that. Winter break, yes. And they devise a plan to kind of get into the school. So, Twilight, sorry, Sunset's plan is to put on night vision goggles, get into skimpy tight outfits like Cat Noir, and went tr- go through the vent and subvert all the uh, security system and whatnot and have some kind of plan to distract the janitor 
and get the keys that way. And yes, mission accomplished. But Twilight just says, you know what you're saying is breaking an entry and that's illegal, right? And Sun Sunset says, but it's cool. I, I want to do that. And uh, the line that Twilight just says here, it just cracks me up. And finally, climbing through a vent is dangerous. And if a young person saw us doing it, they might try to imitate it and get hurt. She just only needs to look at the screen. Which, I mean, you know, we, we already tried scamming the teachers. Why, why get moral now? <laughs> oh, boys. Uh, it's true, but it ain't no fun because Pinkie Pie here has another plan. And her plan is to bake one dozen cupcakes and set it out onto the lawn for Princess Cel sorry, Principal Celestia to pick up on the set and go out and open the door and uh, pick it up while Pinkie Pie and the group sneaks into the school to get the key and get out. And once again, Twilight just says, you do know that that's breaking an entry, right? And Applejack comes up with a plan saying, all right, we have powers. Why don't we use our powers? And did... <laughs> Is this costume new? Because I don't remember seeing this. I think it is. I really thought for a second that she was gonna turn into Lady Legas, considering she was all she had uh, golden thigh high shoes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But yeah, so her plan is to transform into her um, pony Sona and rip the school apart and get into it that way and Twilight just says you do realize that's destruction of school property right and Twilight uh, sorry, and, she, sorry she doesn't even say that she, she just goes yeah no <laughs> uh, and Sunset just says okay well, do you have a plan and Sunset just says oh sure pulls on headphones uh, play with a phone. Principal Celestia comes in, opens the door, and lets them in. Dumbasses. Uh, so you mean Twilight that has to play? Yes, Twilight. You said Sunset. Bad, sorry. But anywho, Principal Celestia comes in, opens the door, and lets them in. And Principal Celestia just says, Oh, all, all, all you have to do was just knock. And nobody think of that in the first place. God damn it. This is just... Silver. What's the logic here? Yes. There is... Well, the logic is the simplest answer is often the best, but we tend to overlook simplicity. I mean... It's... I'm I'm happy that Twilight was the one that came up with the uh, plan and it worked out very well. Yay, bravo. But Sunset's second smartest. <laughs> mm. Maybe she just wanted to wear the cat suit. <laughs> Gotta give boys them fan service. Oh, yeah, true that. Oh man, can't wait to review Sleepy Bug. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> ah, dumbass. We are soon. Soon. We just need Soon. time. <laughs> Soon. Uh, you you too need to experience the miraculous Sleepy Bug, Jacob, because it's a fun show. <laughs> uh, I dread. Uh. Uh. But anywho, finishing this one. Um, they managed to get all the presents, give it to the kids. Orphan, right? Orphanage? Orphanage? I think it's just kids. Yeah, I think it was. They, they don't want to imply anything's wrong with their 
world, so I bet they don't really say orphanage. Hmm. Yoga studio. Oh, nope, it's just to give it to kids a Toys for Kids festival. <coughs> is there? Does that mean there's a Toys for Adults festival? Wow. Oh, God, no. Toys for, uh, toys for Collectors festival? Oh, wow. Remember the G.I. Joe that you had as a kid? Now it's worth millions. Not after my dog got his chomps on it. No, it was half a million. <laughs> Duke went down the mission. No soldier comes back from the same. I mean, Duke is dead, right? Uh, <laughs> no, he's just in a coma. <laughs> and poo. <laughs> Anywho, yes, the kids get their uh, toys and whatnot. And everybody is having a lot of fun. And... Twilight just says, sorry, uh, Sunset just says, all right, cool. That was the last of the gift. Now, who wants to go cash in some gift cards? And Twilight just remembers she left it at school. Now, let's create a plan. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Silver, what do you think, man? <laughs> I mean, this is kind of in the spirit of Spike at Your Service, where Applejack, or sorry, Pinky, uh, com has these elaborate ideas. And I'll wear this mustache. <laughs> so the the alternate, the proposed break-in scenarios are more fun than the actual solution. Drive you a little bonkers there. I, I mean, this, like you mentioned before, the simplest answer is the best answer, but oh, God. <laughs> Jacob. Uh, hello, Pinky to play on Celestia's weakness, which seems to be the same as Equestria versions. Uh, I, oh, man. Uh, this is one of those <laughs> things where it's a missed opportunity that you could have just have the both of them come in and have them, but no, you have to cancel the. Uh, I'm very frustrated, by the way. I couldn't tell. <sighs> that was Jacob. Yeah, that's all. Oh, boy. It's a good story, though. And as for me, ah, it's, it's not bad. I mean, the ideas that they come up with is fun. I'm, I'm surprised that we didn't get Rainbow Dash's plan about running backwards to go back in time so that they could get the key and somehow create a time paradox. That could be fun. Rainbow, do you know what you're doing? You've created a time paradox. Oh, no. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but yes, I know the Superman solution. Ah, uh, yes, that one too. <laughs> so, anywho... Let's carry on with the uh, dashing through the mall. So, sorry. Hold on a second. Dra dashing through the mall or dashing through them all? Through the mall. That's the <laughs> title for this one. Yes, but <laughs> we can't, how do you say it? Dashing through the mall. Dashing through the mall. Yes, dashing through them all. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, boy. Okay. Anywho, we, we see that um, Film Jubilee, what's her name? Uh, it seems that she's getting chummy with her co workers. And it seems that, yeah, she, she, she'll be having fun later. Uh, bon Bon and Lyra have exchange holiday gifts and the two couples uh, got something for each other and yay that's awesome and we see a hug yay because they well they want to show a same sex couple but they also have limitations imposed on them I'm, it's compromised I think this is okay for a kids show I mean, it's not over sexualized. It's just two guys hugging it out, you know, bro hug. 
Well, that, but that's just it. It's a bro hug, not an I love you hug. I mean, they're blushing. A little ki- a kiss on the cheek or something, they're you know. Blushing, man. Come on, give a, give give and take. Don't you get like two couples in a row? Yeah, we, we got Lyra and Bon Bon. We got them. I, I got I got idea their name is. I'm not sure myself. So wait, we we, we got lesbian couple, gay couple, and a normal couple. <laughs> uh, you remember? You see those two nerds. They're hugging it out. Nerds. <laughs> so all in all, it works, man. Like uh, you know what? I I I applaud Hasbro for this one. This one was nice. I, I like this one. I like this one. So anywho, um, we we see Rainbow Dash dashing through the mall, uh, meeting up with her friends because uh, she had a hard time finding parking, and I think who, um, Twilight or. Was it someone asked, why didn't you run through? Why why didn't you run here? And Rainbow... Starlight. Was it? Starlight. Yeah. Was. Who? Starlight? No, I mean Sunset. Oh, yeah, Sunset. sunset. Yeah. <laughs> so Sunset, why, why did you just run through the... Uh, why, did, why, why didn't you just run? And um, Rainbow Dash says, I learned the very hard way that velocity and icy sidewalks don't mix well. <laughs> Uh, that, that is a lesson that <laughs> uh, is not taught in physics. But it is taught in drive, um, driver's ed. What do you do in that scenario, Silver? Do you change your tires to snow tires or put chains on them? Um, neither. I mean, well, four-wheel drive is sort of the new in-between. I've never had to swap my tires for winter oh, weather. Really, no. But normally, you get around that by not uh, by not going at high speeds in the winter. Mm. So, are snow tires and chains are they a thing? Because little they're a thing for larger trucks ah. and maybe a van, but I'm not sure. And cars, they don't change to snow tires. Not well. I don't. I can't speak for everyone. Jacob? Well, yeah. On my end, that's the case. Every year we have to change tires for the winter season. Mm. Although the only times you put on chains, I'm pretty <coughs> sure it's only when it's like really high snow. Uh-huh. The ones that you the no tires are gonna help. Ah, all right. Nine years before, person doesn't have snow, so got no idea. So, yes, uh, carrying on. Twilight just says, okay, who wants to go first? Because they have their tradition. Of, I won't say tradition, but uh, they, they started a tradition where they have a secret Santa kind of thing where uh, they pick a name out of a hat and that will be the person that you're going to get the present for. And Rainbow Dash forgot. So she's going through the mall finding a present for Fluttershy. So she goes to almost every store and they're full with lines because people have last minute shopping. Somehow... Always. uh, Before that, uh, we do see Derpy and Bulk hanging out, doing some shopping together. Aw, ain't that cute. So anywho, Rainbow Dash stumbles upon a store, a knickknack store run by Zephyr, Zephyr Breeze, Fluttershy's brother. Is this the first time, is this the first time that he appears? No, he's been in a few earlier ones, including Summertime. Mm. Ah, okay. But I think this is the prominent one where he's talking more, more. Definitely the talking the most and having the most impact on the, on the story. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, anywho, we we see that um, he's he he's he's in a knickknack store where there's all kind of gizmo do that and knickknacks, and 
Zephyr shows a lot of stuff to Rainbow Dash that she might like, but not Fluttershy. But um, Zephyr just shows through items and whatnot. And lastly, uh, he shows Rainbow Dash a kind of a, what was it called again? Instant camera. And yeah. Rainbow Dash likes it because the one previously that Rain- uh, Fluttershy had broke. And now she can have this one as a replacement. And yay, awesomeness. Um, Pay Zephyr, gets out there, wrap the present, and heads to the group. Um, Rainbow Dash gives the present to her, opens up, and yay, I love it because... Uh, Zephyr got me got one for me last year after my first one broke. So basically, Rainbow Dash has two now, and Rainbow Dash is kind of like, ah, oh, Zephyr, you did it again. I'm gonna kill you. We're like, ah, oh, you jerk. But Fluttershy is just happy because now she can have two of them, and she can do multiple angles. So that's awesome. That's kind of cool and. We have a montage of the girls having uh, exchanging presents. It seems that Rarity got Rainbow Dash, uh, Applejack got Pinkie Pie, and so on and so on and so on. And everybody seems to be enjoying their gift. Yay. Well, Applejack got uh, Fixed Felix's hammer. Really? I I, I know it's a gold, gold yes. hammer by Fluttershy. But is it? Is that the reference? I don't know, but I'm making it. I'm making the connection. It's my brain. All right. You know what? Let, let's go with it. Uh, he can fix it. Exactly. Applejack can fix anything. Yeah. Uh, and and the she can fix it. And and the gift that Sunset got Twilight was just. Adorable. Remember in the uh, theme park where they got conned by the Flint Flint Brothers? Somehow, Apple, sorry, uh, somehow Sunset managed to stuff that thing in a box and give it to Twilight. Ain't that cool? They had a good laugh over it. (laughs) And with that, episode ends. And. Jacob, what do you think? Well, I think we missed some uh, small details somewhere at the start where uh, couples are exchanging gifts. Oh, There's a shot at the video game store and there's uh, a poster of T-Rex on it. Oh yes, T-Rex Revenge. <laughs> Does it say revenge? Kind of. That's the closest thing you'll get to English writing. Or does it say T-Rex Maze? I'm sorry, Cherix Mace? Maze. Maze. Because you can see oh, there's maze. a maze uh, underneath him. Uh, ma- well, that might his revenge is a maze? I don't know. Uh, earlier in the Question Girls, they had the, the release of Cherix Revenge, the video game. Oh. And we learned that Fluttershy really likes revenge. Oh, oh yeah, that, that short. Yeah, I remember. Where somehow Fluttershy was better at gaming than uh, Sunset was. Mm-hmm. Yep, that is the poster of T-Rex Revenge. Uh, yeah. ah, okay. I, I can just imagine uh, Ultima, a Calabat. Now, well, forget. Ugh. It gets bad when we reach T-Rex Revenge 9. <laughs> no! They just. Why? What's a paladin? Wait, hold on. <laughs> Hold on, I think I get the reference. Isn't the didn't the Seth mention that in one of his reviews for the uh, what should we call it uh, follow up? I forgot which one it was. Crap. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. All in all, it was a fine story. <laughs> Uh, 
Silver, what do you think? Well, uh, so which one of us? My, myself? Wait, did I? Yeah, this one. What, what do you think of this one? All right. Well, it's kind of fun to see. Uh, it's fun to see Rainbow working through things. Zephyr, I mean, a test of Rainbow's patience. Now, here's the thing. Zephyr, in a lot of ways, doesn't work as a human as he does a, a pony. The His introduction into Quest for Girls saw him leaning in and physically imposing himself over Rainbow Dash, which took on much worse meaning than it did as a pony, where she could just shove him off the sofa. So this one where he's a little bit more distant, a little bit more professional, but giving her preferential treatment over all the other people in line, I'd be pissed. Oh, yeah. That's how you create, uh, a, that's how you create Akumas. <laughs> so, uh, oh, God, I can only imagine Hawk Moss <laughs> at this time of year. <laughs> I have unlimited access, but I have no time because I need to create my holiday designs. <laughs> I need to make a dabbing Santa. God. But uh, either which way, this was a lot of fun. And again, to see everyone's silly gifts and their reactions. I mean, the only one who seemed a little bit weirded out by their gift was Sunset getting some kind of video game from Pinky. I'm trying to remember what that game was. Uh, I'm, I, don't, I don't think you can actually see it. Oh, yeah. Uh if I'm not mistaken, this is the same game that uh, she lost to Fluttershy. It's the Squirrel Climbing Picking Up game. Remember, remember that one? Yes. Oh, she's nuts about it. <laughs> and uh, in, in a scene, you get to see that, oh, okay, thank you, Pinky. And Fluttershy just leans in. Oh, is that the game I'm good at? Oh, Sunset, I'm going to make you my bitch. That's right. Uh, boys. Uh, Indeed. Let's see. Um, anything more, Silver? No, yes. Nope, that's it for me. All right, and as for me, um, this episode was fun. I I do like to see the uh, friendship going on in this episode. Uh, from snips and snails, uh, to to them like buying the same gift and having the same idea, is just so awesome. And snips crying over, sorry, snails crying over it, and he he's just overwhelmed with feelings. That that's awesome. And we see Rainbow Dash, kind of. Being an adult in this scenario here, she she wants, she she likes the stuff that Zephyr's showing her, from the basketball thing to some VR goggles. But in her mind, she's always thinking about Fluttershy first because uh, I'm going, I, I'm I'm buying stuff for her, not for me. So uh, let's get her stuff first before I I can spend on me. And yeah, that, that's that, that's really awesome. That's really awesome. So last one on the list is oh come all ye squash squashful squashful. You got it. What's that? Is that a word? Squash is a vegetable, I believe. Oh, is it vegetable or does it have fruit? Uh, it does have seeds. It's a vegetable. Oh. Uh, it's a word for this show. Oh, actually, it's a fruit. Wait, what? All types of squashes have seeds and come from flowering parts of the plant. So, thus, they are, much like tomatoes, they are considered fruits. Wait, what about pumpkins, then? I think they're probably a fruit, too, because they have a seed. Oh, I'm so confused. Anyhow... Carrying on. Oh, I can. Oh, no, I can make this more complicated. Apparently, uh, most squash is classified as a pepo, which is a one-celled, many-seeded berry with a hard rind, 
which I think would describe a pumpkin as well. <laughs> Have I blown your minds yet? I'm very confused. Very, very confused. Uh, I'm very confused. I'm Silver Quill. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, Silver Quill. Anywho, carrying on. We see um, Cantalot. Sorry. Uh, Cantalot High. Yes, we see Cantalot High from above, snowing. And we get into the school, and we see uh, the students exchanging gift cards. Not gift cards. Exchanging holiday, holiday card cards. Yeah, holiday cards. That's very strange. But anyway, exchanging cards. We see Digipon Tree and also Octavia changing cards too. And... And aww. And aww, Yes. Remember what I mentioned before about uh, Flash Sentry not getting the girl? Ha! This is what I'm talking about! Bulk Biceps and Derpy are just a perfect couple. They're so cute together. Ah! Oh. Screw you, Flash! <laughs> oh, so mean. Uh, the show's not... Sorry. Hold on. Now that I think about it, uh, Saving Pinkie Pie was Flash's final appearance in the series, wasn't it? Saving Pinkie Pie? Oh, the yes. earlier one we saw, we the talked about. Fight. Yes, I, I think so. Not including the special that he had simping for Sunset. Oh, the song. Yeah. Uh, I forget that came out after this. I, or not. I don't know. It's somewhere in between, but it's either that or this. And both of them are not really good representation of Flash. Come on. You know, Flash, I, I may be mean, I may say hurtful things, but when you really come down to it, Flash was an interesting character where he stood up for the bully and uh, did the quote-unquote right thing. But as time goes on, his character became a laughing stock. And that's just sad. It is very unfortunate. Never wanted Flash to fail, just wanted him to grow, develop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the ah oh man, forgetful girl. Who was her name? Oh, uh, Wallflower yeah, Blush. Wallflower. I mean, she she came out of a shell in the uh, what you call this episode uh, the, the concert one where Sunset's yeah, backstage yeah. pass even she got to kind of get out of her shell, go to concerts meet new people, do have fun so that's fun, amazing cool, unfortunately this is a question regal special if your, your character only becomes a one shot unfortunately but hey whatever so carrying on, we see Applejack sees a friend saying that, yo, um, who's ready for a new holiday tradition and so on. And what she wants to do is uh, take pictures with her friends and uh, kind of uh, send them to the school. And she, and she her plan is, uh, let's take a picture together. And have the backdrop be some kind of cornucopia. I never understood what that was. A cornucopia? Yeah, I, I know, I, I've seen what that looks like, but I don't understand what's the point of that. I mean, what's the point? That's supposed to symbolize a collection of health and life, uh, food and nourishment. You know, sort of. <laughs> Bounty, of course, but then they, you know, you read the Hunger Games and it's the place where all the weapons okay. are. Still fun. So, anywho, um, Applejack wants to do that, uh, start a tradition with her friends, with that one. And uh, she shows pictures of what Granny Smith wants them to do. Uh, one time they were pioneers. And another time they were uh, in, they were the forest, 
And one time they were girls. Ooh. Twilight points out, wait, I don't see anyone in the picture. And Applejack just says, because you can see ghost Twilight, duh. Uh, dumb. So Applejack says, yeah, um, if you, let, come on guys, let, let's do this because this is going to be fun. Uh, I'll meet you guys at the auditorium. Or was it Jim? I forgot. I think it was the gym. So she, she says at the gym. And he, Sunset just says, Oh no, I, I would love to, but I have a thing. You know, to do. Yes, with Hope Dunkington from Crystal Prep. Yes. Yes. And Applejack says, cool, bring him along. He can take the picture. <laughs> so, uh, they all kind of don't want to do this because it's embarrassing. But because of their friends, they kind of do it. And... <laughs> do it! Uh, and Twilight just says... You know, I could just design the costume. And everybody says no. And Rainbow Dash just says, Remember when you made us be the quadril... Wow, this this is not this is not easy word for me. The quadrilatic... Quadrilateral? Uh, quadrilateral equation for Halloween. Um, and then the puns ensue. I know. For the rest of the episode. Because... Uh, you got to be plus or minus, and <laughs> Rainbow Dash says she could barely function. <laughs> yeah, that just doesn't add up. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy, that, that's not fun. But anywho, so they decide to okay, cool, let's do this, and the Applejack sets the meeting and whatnot, and. Rarity just says, you know what? I'm going to make the costume and I'm going to make it work. And she goes to the costume department and makes some kind of fancy costume with the time that she has. Really awesome. So we see that... Oof, I got no idea what the girls are. I know that Pinkie Pie is corn. Twilight is grapes. Uh, I, I got no idea, man. Like, my, 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 I, I, I'm just lost. So let's just say that Rarity creates an awesome costume and they try to sneak their way to the gym unnoticed. But um, somehow they their timing sucks and... They got caught in the middle of changing period. And oh no, they're humiliated and they reach to the gym and Applejack just seems to be, well, getting stuff ready before to finish and uh, just says, what are you guys wearing? Grammy Smith was the one that wanted to do the dress up. All I wanted to do was just to take a picture with the cornucopia in the backdrop. And okay, so now it's Apple Jackson to wear a costume, and oh gosh, so she she too needs to be in the humiliation. Oh no. So she, she does put on her costume and they say their happy holidays. And this one is, this one feels a bit forced. Yep. But all in all, sorry. Well, oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry, I'm interrupted. But all in all, they take a nice picture and, and, and you, the, the last scene of Equestria Girls is the girls in. The girls in fruit and veggie costumes. And I have to say... Fluttershy's... 
Fluttershy is grapes. Uh, Rainbow Dash is a uh, pumpkin. Oh. Yes, I think that's a pumpkin. Thanks. Then uh, Apple Jacks an apple. Sunset's a carrot. True. Rarity's a squash. I think so. Uh, Pinkie Pie's corn. Pinkie Pie's because she's corn. <laughs> I got no idea what Twilight and is. And Twilight's an egg. She's an eggplant. Eggplant. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, this is the last scene of the show and uh, episode ends. Yeah. So, final thoughts. <laughs> Silver. Well, how do, dear Equestria girls? <coughs> Maybe we could have gotten a graduation ceremony, but eh, there's always hope for that in the comics. Yeah, I mean... We, we... This is an odd way to end the franchise, or at least this entry in the franchise. Uh, especially with everyone laughing at them. I mean, it's like, hey! Come on, these are wor world savers several times over. Uh, mm. But either which way, I mean... Eh. It's a little bit of silliness, but not the funnest silliness. It's more just visual. And seeing Rarity's rather frightening uh, smile as she gets everyone to put on the clothing. <coughs> and th th That's the sign of someone who's broken. The She's wearing her emotions. And she's broken. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Jacob? I don't know, funny enough, I think this was uh, the funniest of the bunch. But, uh, well, I, I don't think there's anything more for me to say. Uh, I don't know, it, it was okay. Alright. And as for me, this one is okay. It, 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 it's, it's fun. We, we get to see the girls being silly. And here's the thing I'm thinking in my head. Alright, okay, you got, you got the costume. Why did you need to put it on there and then? Couldn't you just bring it to the auditorium and wear it there? Because it will, it will kind of uh, avoid all the hassle of you being humiliated in public by just putting on the outfit. And once you get there, you get to see like Applejack's not intending you guys to wear the costume and whatnot. So basically, you guys can just... But... If that, if we do it that way, it won't be funny, and we, we won't get a comedy scene. So yeah, but yeah, uh, there's nothing much to say. But um, earlier on, we do get to see bulk biceps and derpy. There's a couple that I never thought that would work. Even as they dance in those flowery outfits together, did they? Oh, wait, that was him and Fluttershy. No, no, no. Yeah, for a while, was, him and Fluttershy looked like I a couple. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, Bulk and Derpy, that, that's, that's, just, that's just odd, you know? But I... Well, who, who can yeah, say? I guess it works out because they're... I don't know. They're, they're, they're making it work. They're making it work. But yeah. Um, with that, that was the last TV special TV content for Equestria Girls. After this, we got nothing except for the comics, which we already covered. So, technically, this is the last. The last of the G4. More oh, Equestria Girls, but yes. Oh, man, like. Sorry? It's the, the last of the Equestria Girls in the before time of the long, long ago. I mean, not including the minis. Those are something else. But, yeah. Oh, man. It, 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 I feel like this is kind of... I won't say depressing. I'm, I'm kind of sad because we won't be getting any more. And the lore that the show develop was awesome i mean when you take a look see at how it started out and where it is now 
it started out as a cash grab to create more toys for equestria sorry um, for ponies instead of using ponies we get humans and whatnot and the movie itself was kind of okay not the best but it had its own story it had its own universe and it had its own uh, lore and it's fun it's just amazing I, I, I can't see much and I'm just happy that I get to experience this Well, there's always something new around the corner. I think that's the easiest way to put it. <coughs> True. So, adieu, Equestria Girls. Adieu. Silver, what's the chance of um, G5 having Equestria Girls? Well, I know they're releasing, or at least they were thinking of releasing, a little girl version of Izzy Moonbow. But isn't that the Baby's Alive thing? Is it? I, that that might be all I know. Let's see here. Izzy, Izzy, Izzy. But if it is Baby's Alive, well, then it's just a little crossover. Okay, uh, here we are. Yep, it is a Baby's Alive yeah, figure. That's why I remember. So, all right. Well, it was worth a shot, I, uh, sorry, but that's as far that's as far as I know. But I, I don't know if they'll revise it. I, I don't know if they would too, because the blowback from Equestria Girls at the very beginning was kind of rough, and G Five already is kind of rough. So pushing it into that dimension and not doing it properly is going to be really rough. First things first, it's going to be the art style, the animation style. Is it going to be 3D? Is it going to be 2D? Is it going to emulate Equestria Girls? Is it going to emulate um, uh, the 2D thing on YouTube? So th there's a lot of questions going on with this one. And Well, the main question, 2D or not 2D? That is the question. Indeed. 2D before 3D. I know. But anywho, but anywho, um, let's wrap things up. Let's wrap things up. So if you guys have any questions, concern, <coughs> sorry. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at davishuchiking.com. You can reach. Oh, this is going to be rough for me. You can also reach us on the Twitters. I don't care. I calling it Twitters. At uh, the show's Twitter account is at the MBS show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Where can the good people find you, Silver? You can find me on uh, Twitter. Yes, it is Twitter. Uh, DeviantArt and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill, uh, which will also contain links to my Patreon coffee so you can support my reviews, my weekday puns, and any other tomfoolery. Uh, by the time this airs, I believe uh, Everfree Northwest will have run its course, so I hope you all came to say hello you. And I'm lo looking forward to seeing everyone. And, well, that's about the long and the short of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure uh, some people... I, I'm sure this person said hello and probably replying to the chat and said he did. <laughs> there we go. Hey, prick <laughs> Uh... Hello, insert person name here. It was nice to see you at Everfree Northwest 2023. Yeah, do it, do it like that. It'll be safe. It'll be awesome. <laughs> uh, Jacob, what about you, man? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt under the user username Yakapun Tolkad, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Thermal Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic <coughs> animals in a dual fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go do so. Uh, if 
Uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on playwithlive.com. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, and myself, Like. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I'm Jacob. And we'll, guys, catch you next time with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Aha. So, remember, guys, when we go out in the snow, we need to wear warm clothes. If we hadn't learned that by now, I'd worried for our survival. I mean, how can you forget? You know what they say, if it's too hot, you take off clothes. How can it be caught in winter? I don't know, maybe it's too hot. <laughs> no, wait, that's in your case, Norman. <laughs> yeah, haven't you ever heard of climate change? <laughs>